The standard graphical representation of categorical data is a bar chart. And here, using the Titanic data file, I will be showing you how to do that. So, what we have in this data file, and that's the, the source where you can get that data file, is a list of all the passengers which were on the Titanic when in 1912 it collided with an iceberg and sank. Uh, we know the name of the person, which passenger class they were in, uh, the age, their gender, and whether they survived or not. Survival is one or zero. But what we're interested in right now for here is this variable, which class on the boat, whether first class, second or third class. Um, and what we want to see is what's the percentage or proportion or frequency of passengers in first, second and third class. So we have all of this here. How do we how do we now get the proportion? I'll show you a couple of ways of getting this done. Here's the most basic way of of doing that. I'll just a little bit higher. We can take the data, highlight all your data columns, sort sort by passenger class. And then we know we have uh, first, second, and third. And now you can just see, okay, let's highlight all of these fields with first. And as you highlight, you'll actually see Excel counts how many cells you've highlighted. So you can see it now just at the edge of that highlighted field, 322. Or you can see it down here, it also says count 322. So we know there are 322 first class passengers. And then you go and find where the second class passengers is. And that's easy because it's sorted. So we have second class, that's, oh, not so many. 280, actually less second class passengers than first class passengers. And, and let's find the third class. Here we go. Where does it start here? And we go all the way down. And we find 711. You can see that down here. So let's go back to your table. 711. So this is now the frequency, and we could display them in a bar chart and we'll get to that in a moment but first i want to show you and basically two more ways of finding um how many they are um and the different ways will be useful in different uh occasions so i'll just leave these numbers here here's in a sec here's the second way there's a command called a function called count if okay so we want to count in column B, we can actually highlight the entire column, so just B, and then in inverted, oh, then we want to count those cells that have that value first, 322. Now we can copy this down because that reference to first is a relative reference. So if we copy this down, that will copy as well. Okay, again, count if column B and all the cell values that are equal to second. That's 280, and then how many cell values are equal to third? That's 711. Okay, so this is a quicker way to count if you have categorical data and if you're looking for exact ma matches of data. Let me show you a third way. In some sense, this is the most powerful tool, more powerful than the two very specific methods we've learned so far, and that is using a pivot table. <clears throat> this isn't an introduction to pivot tables, so if you already know pivot tables, then this will be quite straightforward. If you don't know pivot tables yet, then what I'll show you will look a little bit obscure, but perhaps it will encourage you to find out about pivot tables Go to YouTube, type in introduction to pivot tables or Google or use another search engine to search introduction to pivot tables in Excel 
and you will find excellent introductions. So we'll highlight the table. For our case, we would only have to basically only highlight that column, but let's just highlight the whole table. You go to insert pivot table. Okay, then you have options. Do you want it as a new worksheet or existing worksheet? We say new worksheet, and you get this thing. And now I have to just remove this a little bit so my image doesn't hide. Yeah, so. And the action happens here on the right hand side. Here on the left, we will see a result in a moment. So we are interested in P class, that's the passenger class, and we want to put different values of p class into rows now remember in some sense we're trying to recreate this sort of table what happened now here we go okay so and you can see we already have these first second and third and actually blank because there are some passengers where the data set doesn't know which class they're in so then we want some values here okay and there's a little box here values so you can now Track your same variable here again and sort of Excel, at least in my case, it may have learned from something I've done before, already knows what it wants. It wants the count of P class. But you have this little drop down values. You can actually go to value field settings and you can change something. You can do average, minimum, maximum, when that makes sense. It doesn't really make sense right now because we are talking about categorical variables. So we leave it with count. Okay, and what you can see here is actually exactly that table 3 to 2 to 18, 7, 11, 3 to 2 to 87, 11. That we that information which we already got previously. Okay, so brilliant. Now we have three ways how we can get that information. So let's delete these. So these are the frequencies. Let's go to the display methods. Then we want the relative frequencies or percentages. Okay, how do we calculate that? Well, we need the total. So we need to know what's the total. So we sum all of these up. 1313. And then for the relative frequency, we want to know what is 322 divided by this one. It's 0.245, around a quarter of the passengers were first class passengers. And then what about the others? Now let's see, again, we're learning something about Excel. If I copy that formula down using that little square box, dragging that down, what happens? You see, something doesn't quite work. So you, let's click, double click into this formula so we realize what doesn't work. Um, it has moved the reference to both cells, but we really, let's go back here. We really only want to move the blue reference. We want the red one to be fixed. So how do we do that? You put dollar signs in front of the column and row identifier. So if we now copy that down, you can now see that the blue reference has moved with our copying action, but the red reference has been fixed as we wanted it. So here are the percentages. Well, 0.245 means 24%. If you want to show them as percentages, you can highlight them right mouse click go to format cells and then there's an option here percentage and perhaps we don't actually need any decimal points and then it shows that as 25 percent 21 and 54 percent but it's really underlying is still that same number that's just difference how it is displayed so now we want to show that graphically so how can we do that? You can highlight your little table here, the important information. Actually, you could highlight the column heading here as well. We can go to insert. <coughs> and then there are options here, recommended charts. You could ask what we want is here. We want a column or bar chart. That's that little symbol here. So we click on that, say a column chart and Excel does recognize a number of things okay you can see that here that frequencies that title that heading has become the title of the graph um, the first second and third has become have become labels on the horizontal axis and then the numbers here are now the heights of the bar 
bars and you can see that on that vertical axis. So this is a pretty good bar chart already for our little uh, data set. If you want to now get the same type of graph, but not with uh, frequencies, but with relative frequencies, well, we can do exactly the same. Let's just save that, save that here. Okay, so what you could do to make that super easy, you could, we could just copy that one column across and add these row headings here again. And then we do exactly the same. We highlight this little table. We go to insert bar chart. Let's actually use for fun a three uh, chart with 3D looking columns. Okay, here we have it. Okay, basically exactly the same information. Just now on the vertical axis, you don't see the numbers, the frequencies, but the relative frequencies, which we calculated here. And the bars look just a little bit more fancy. Okay, so this is how we um, how we create bar charts for categorical data.